Hey guys, Brian here. Thought I'd give you a barn update on the new shop. Show you what I've got going on. What I've been up to. Look at this. Ah. Looks like howitzers have been attacking the barn. We've got a bunch of siding off. But we have new posts. So I have replaced all of the bad posts on this side of the barn now 100 percent we got nice new oak six by sixes from a local sawmill here these trees grew about five miles up the road probably so got a fish plated in there to where it uh, that top piece can't get off that post this one here new all the way up You'll see I put a, a six by six on the top up there of each of these to spread the load out across those. I'll be showing you up there in a minute why I did that. Uh, those are actually the ends cut off of these as I cut them to length. Uh, so I've got, got those put in. They're vertical at this moment. Everything is level and square. I uh, had to saw out all of these cross pieces. Had to cut them out of the post because they were they were dialed in. No way to get that apart to replace them. Otherwise, so I cut them off and uh, just put these pieces of oak two by both of them on, or screwed them to the sides underneath there and just put those four bys across and i'm going to take a bunch of these two bys i've got since i've got boat loads of those that hold this four up i'm going to take those out when i take this four out and put them on the outside and attach my sheeting over that I haven't decided for sure if i'm going to put wood back on here or put tin i think tin would probably be a lot easier to uh to keep sealed up for heat versus putting the wood and putting you know these little slats over top of the gaps and then you'd have to caulk all that and uh, I think it looked better with the wood but I just don't know what do y'all think so got the loft sitting on these old in between six by sixes uh, it's not attached Right now to these, we're ready to cut them off and get the posts out. And uh, so they're just, they're partially supported with those four bys, but really, I mean, it, there's, that one's not even touching up there. The weight's all on these. So same thing on the end down there. Got this pier here poured. This is gonna be the actual floor level in this building. Uh, this is the same height as the concrete there in the center that already existed and it's level all the way to the end I've had ropes on it lasers and everything to figure out exactly where this need to be you still see the rope coming across there so still got to dig a hole here and pour a footer for my bridge crane these will be coming out not too worried about that it's blocked up there right now, so it's level. No one of these posts will be coming out because there's really nothing left of that one. So it's a pretty sad shape. But it's all going to get replaced. Got one of my piers here that I poured for the bridge crane itself. The posts are going to sit on top of this. Got it all tied into the original concrete. Uh, spent a lot of time getting that all all to adhere good uh, fixed the crack down through there filled it all in to where it had settled busted that piece so it's all packed through there as thick as this this wall is uh, when I get this jacked up and out of here I'm gonna come in here and and uh, take this stack of rocks out that the barn was originally sitting on and uh, patch in all this concrete and get it poured up square and level here so then I can come in here and 
dig all this out and go on across and uh, get a good footer in here on the end and have this all level uh, that concrete pad is level with the top of that concrete pad over there it's gonna be the be floor height in the shop when I get done uh, this corner over here is gonna be the corner that the uh, the boring mill is gonna sit in that's one reason why I'm just kind of putting these pads in here the mill is actually gonna start out in there somewhere and uh, when I pour the base for it I'll have you know all my holes put in and my boxes with the floating bolts to lag down the boring mill to the floor so it'll be really rigid as you can see this this slab here the part that I poured is you know 12 inches plus thick this got another six inches of concrete under that so it's gonna have a lot of concrete under it so this thing should be super rigid and shouldn't be going anywhere so you know that's uh i talked about the gravel being in here this half of where the concrete ends and then there's concrete underneath of that too i think i'm gonna just try and clean that up and pour on top of that packed gravel and that should be a good base and that'll still give me you know this slab will be plenty thick even on top of that so i gotta come in here and do this corner get it poured in with the footer again again it's gonna be this height which is about where that post is cut off to uh, it does still need to go up so i'll still have to lap it that post is in pretty good shape otherwise all the way up to the top so it's going to be your stand got all kinds of wood scraps around in here let's reject this post up it's up to the right height close everything for leveling you see i put uh, wood filler in the gap there uh, that'll help keep critters from deciding to go in there and and uh, make little homes getting rid of those gaps is I found a key to uh, keeping the bugs out there's a gap they want to go in no gap they stay out pretty good so we'll get up here and see what we've got ah look at that you can remember, <laughs> remember how much that was down when it started out and we're actually close to level now actually the post is uh, two inches high on the outside as it should be because these in the center are still not quite all the way up but i don't need to jack i just made all these to where they were the same in the center i didn't really need to to jack them up all the way because when i come in here with the bridge crane it's going to be cutting those posts off and they're going to be sitting on top of it anyway and all that's going to come out so it won't matter whether it's up the same or not so basically these will be getting cut uh, somewhere in here it'll be cut off and bolted to the bridge and those posts will be there and if you look you can see I somehow went ahead and went on out uh, where this roof is set on that on those for you know well over 100 probably 150 plus years uh, the wood sagged you can see the bow in it there where it's up here on this one too so by putting these six by sixes up there i have spread the load out quite a bit versus when it was just originally sitting on top of the post and put my grooves back in there in the same spot and see can't get the dowels in uh, because we're still laid out 
the fur at the top. Haven't quite got the plumb. Uh, the roof's not wanting to quite go back together up there. So what I've done is taken a chain and boomer. Going to put it on there and I just come down here every now and then and give it a couple of twists. Help it get back together and then after it's been out here, you know, under tension for a while and the winds blowed and everything, the nails have seemed to work their way back in up there and uh, it straightened itself up, the tension comes off so I come back down and crank it a little bit more and get it pulled in there. So eventually I guess I'll have it all straightened up. You still see there how much we're kicked out. Probably out mm, two inches at the top, at least still on that side. Uh, probably about the same on this side. This side over here all still needs to be jacked up. Unless a couple of these posts, those front two still need to be replaced. I have to get them in there. Uh, I don't know if I'll try and tackle that uh, during the winter right now or if I'll wait. It's going to be my guess. I'll probably wait till springtime. So just don't know how much time and the weather is going to allow work to be done down here. Starting, starting to get a lot of really cold, windy days, which are tough. Tough to work on this, especially by yourself. Heck, just wrestling these. Uh, these six by sixes up in here, uh, 16 foot long. That's a that's a backbreaker right there. Getting these suckers in there. I actually uh, I had to wrap a sling around them and stand them up with the tractor. The tractor won't lift high enough to get them in, but uh, did get the weight off of them where I could help maneuver them and shove them on up into position and get them in there. Uh, getting this all held. To get the old ones out and the other ones back in was quite a fiasco. I didn't film any of it because I wouldn't advise anybody to try it. Uh, leave that to professionals, maybe. I don't know. I'm not a professional, but I'll give it a try anyway. Again, you can see how much that uh, that's up there after the years. You're benching to see over time if it if it kind of straightens back out. I'm gonna try and put some. When I get all this loft out of here, I'm going to try and put some braces in there on top of the, the four bys that the sheeting's on and go on up to the roof and maybe jack it up a little bit and jam them in there to uh, spread the load out a little bit more. Where this roof's on here, it's really uh, it's hard to believe how much the, the roof and the, the oak boards and all that stuff up there weighs. I mean, it it's a three-ton jack is really about all it'll pick up what's on one of these posts uh, the sixes do it pretty easy but the threes are they they struggle so if you figure that oak six by six has got you know six thousand pounds sitting on top of it there's there's no wonder that over 150 years this stuff uh, uh, bows from the the weight of all that steel up there that's you know, it's quite a bit of roof. It's one of the reasons why I chose to rehab this barn is because uh, the roof's in pretty decent shape and uh, there's uh, thousands of dollars worth of tin up there. Uh, if you had to buy that and replace it, uh, you'd be looking at uh, about $5,000 in roofing tin alone. Uh, and then you got to buy all the sheeting to go underneath of it and those two bys, which again are all in pretty good shape. So it's a lot of work, but it's uh, saving the money. And hopefully I'll be able to get in here and get to doing some, some real machining. And it's going to be really nice to have all this space. I said it looks so much better up here in the attic than downstairs where those stalls and everything still in there you, you, you don't realize the size the you know this 60 by 40 which is a decent size I think it's gonna be gonna be good of course you know I got got another mill you all haven't seen plus the 
the boring mill to go in here and then I'll probably move my lathes and other stuff down. Uh, think about putting a wood boiler in uh, to heat this and to help assist heat on the house. I've got a lot of wood here. As you see back there, all that wood's uh, back there is mine. There's, it goes back there a mile or so. Uh, there's a creek back there with trees all along it. And we got you know, fence rows and stuff. There's, there's always trees down. And I do burn wood in the fireplaces in the main house some. But uh, not a lot because of, the tra of dragging all the wood in and the mess it makes. But uh, if I can get this going and, and have a, uh, a nice boiler set up to where I could heat both in one central location, uh, I think that would be the ideal thing. Uh, don't know what you all think about the hydraulic heat. I'm really hesitant to put it in the floor and the concrete when I pour it. You know, just using PEX tubing seems to be the standard. So I've thought, I've considered that but I don't know if the machine's on it, what the likelihood would be of having a problem. And of course, if you want to lag anything down, uh, it's pretty much impossible to do because you don't know exactly where your water lines are in your concrete when you pour it. So I'm afraid that if you go in there, you're gonna hit them. Also, uh, I'm not sure about, uh, you know, if I decided to, uh, to go off somewhere and leave it. Uh, I guess you put antifreeze in it and that makes it less likely to have a, a cracking problem or anything from that. But again, if you do have something break, I mean, you're pretty much, how do you find it? And uh, I mean, I don't want to tear up 60 foot of floor looking for a leak. I would of course do multiple circuits, but still, if you're gonna, gonna keep it working, it just seems like it'd be trouble. So I thought about putting it in the walls and letting it radiate in. Uh, don't know if anybody has any experience with that that can give me any advice or input on how well it would work in the walls. Like I said, I am planning on putting insulation in here, uh, putting it on the backs up there and sealing the roof, uh, probably over top of the crane in here. Again, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll have something going up there to seal all that off so don't don't have to heat you know that's 30 probably over 30 feet to the eave up there so you know, it'd be hard to uh to get that heat down here i guess you could put some fans up there and blow it back down but that's just more electricity running I'd like to be as efficient as possible um so i would like to hear what you all think about the the hydronic heat and making that work in an application like this and maybe y'all can give me some some advice if anybody has that how they like it things like that so but it's nice seeing that level over there since me that one there's boards kind of warped up this one over here is warped down must have been the, the opposite halves of the same tree uh, or they just cut them backwards. <laughs> but uh, they're in good shape. Good t oak two bys. And they just brace the wall out there. So, so I'll give you an update. Show you what I got. You got to get uh, the cross piece remade for that one. It was rotten, toast. And uh, get a couple of these others screwed in here. Uh, get them all braced. This one here is screwed in. You gotta screw in this side and get it shoved up. And the weight of the, that door hanging off of it is pulling it down right now. So I'll, I'll pull it off when I get some of this floor up and I've got access to these two bys to put on the outside to go ahead and start getting the wall put back in this thing. Try and keep some of the wind out. But so far it's holding. Looking pretty decent. We've got the front wall there, nice and square, holding, it's in good shape. Back wall, not such good shape, but 
Most of it's not going to be reused, like so when the crane goes in here. So that's why I'm working on the pads on that end first. I'll try and get that steel in, get that all braced up and held to where I know it's not going to go anywhere. Uh, don't if, I'd like to really have that done by the end of the year, but just don't know if the weather's going to let that happen. And we've already set two record colds for the year already here. And uh, it's pretty nice today. It's up close to, it's in the 40s. Uh, so it feels like summertime after being 15, 10, uh, eight one morning this week. So we've already had single digits. And three years ago, we didn't even, didn't even have a day that went under 20. Last year was really cold, but so. It's time to climb up there and put a couple more cranks on this thing, get her brought in, and uh, then I think the sun's gonna be down, and it's about gonna be the day. So, thanks for watching. Okay, so I'll give you guys a quick look. Uh, everybody's raved about the their nogas. So, uh, Enco had these on sale. Uh, and then there was a deal for 20% off of that and free shipping. So they made this thing like 60 bucks. So I went ahead and got one. Got the fine adjust on it. And I'll be trying it out. I'm using it some more and then that way I can mount my GoPro when I get my skeleton case I ordered. I'll be able to mount that and y'all won't have me doing this in all my videos. The stuff will be stable again and you'll be able to hear me because I've got it in the case instead of the original case I had where it was real hard to hear. So, uh, looks like a well-made product. This thing, when it's locked down, it's, it's locked down. It's, it's a lot more rigid than, uh, this, uh, the Sterrett, which is my, it's my normal indicator what I use. So I normally have that two inch on there. Most of the time I've taken it off and put it on this to give it a try. And I'll be using this and seeing how it works. And probably my little camera will be on the steric.